All right, 36, we have the, this histogram that shows the number of siblings recorded for each student from a group of 80 students. And some of the summary statistics and a histogram, which I just said, are you know given here with a mean of 3.5, standard deviation of 2.535, first quartile of two and a third quartile of five. Okay, so they're we're told that that outlier is defined as a number that is more than 1.5 times the IQR below the first quartile or above the third quartile. So using this definition of an outlier in this given info, which of the fallen can be concluded? Okay, so let's first decide, figure out what the IQR is. So the IQR is the distance that Q1 and Q3 are from each other. So the IQR would be three. And then, so to find an outlier, you do 1.5 times three, and that'll give you 4.5. And you wanna see if there are anything, any values for 4.5 units or more above five. So add 4.5 to five. So anything above 9.5 would be an outlier. And you take away 4.5 from two and you get negative 2.5. So outliers are values below negative 2.5 or above 9.5. So looking at this graph, these are whole numbers, but anything above 9.5 would be to this line because 10 is an outlier because 10 is above that. So we have one, we got two outliers. There are no negative values, so we don't have to worry about that. So we got two outliers. So let's see what we got here. And okay, then it looks like we we're talking about the median and the mean. So remember in a skewed distribution, the mean gets pulled more towards the tail than the median. So the mean in this case would be greater than the median because remember the mean is sensitive to outliers. So the median would have to be less than, um, the median would be less than the mean in this case, and there would be two outliers. So let's see which of these would work. So it's not gonna be A, B, C. So D and E, so the median is, so it's gonna be E, it's the median is less than the mean and have, we, have, we have two outliers. The answer is clearly E. All right, 37. In the states of Florida and Colorado, veterinarians investigating obesity in dogs. That's interesting. I, I guess, I mean, I guess it's good to watch their, their weight. Investigating obesity in dogs obtained random samples of pet medical records and recorded the weights of the dogs in the samples. A test was concluded of HO, your null hypothesis, where the proportions P1 and P2 are equal versus the alternative hypothesis where they're not equal. P1 and P2 are not equal. So P1 represents a proportion of all overweight dogs in Florida and P2 represents a proportion of all overweight dogs in Colorado. So we get a test statistic for a two samples D test for a difference between the proportions we get of 1.85 and a significance, but we're using a significance level of 0.05. So we want to see what would happen here. So essentially, we want to find what the area would be to the right of 1.85 and to the left of negative 1.85 or double or two times this because we have a two-sided test. So we have to consider both directions because it's not, we have a not equal to. So find the p-value or the probability here. For that, we can use our calculator. Distribution, normal CDF, 1.85, lower bound, upper bound, billion. This is a, a Z score, so we don't have to enter anything else. And we get a, a value of 0.032. Now, if this is a one-sided test, we would reject it. But since it's a two-sided test, I mean, we would fail. No, yeah, we would reject it because our value is less than 0.05. But since it's, it's a two-sided test, we got to multiply this by two, and we get a p-value of 0.064. So our p-value is actually greater than our alpha level 0.05. So then we're gonna um fail to reject an all hypothesis and basically say we don't have significant evidence 
uh, conclude that the proportion of all overweight dogs in Florida is different than the proportion of all overweight dogs in Colorado. So let's see which of these match up. I think it's just the first one actually, now that I'm looking at it. So there's not sufficient statistical evidence to conclude that the proportion of all overweight dogs in Florida is different than the proportion of all overweight dogs in Colorado because the p-value is, yeah, it's gonna be A. Um, yeah, not, so the, the rest is like just trying to be clever word and you hear about the p-value, so it's A. Thirty-eight. A newspaper editor wants to investigate whether residents of the city support a proposal to build a new high school football stadium. Stadium. The editor hires a polling firm to conduct a survey and requests that a sample of 500 residents be selected using a stratified sampling design based on voting districts in the city. Which of the following methods will achieve the desired sampling design? Okay, so if we're going to use a stratified sampling design. You basically want to break the um, the group into well, you want to break the entire you know sample to all the in all the all the 500 residents into subgroups based on like a certain characteristics based on like something that may um, something that may affect how they would you know respond to you know um, in, in this case um, the survey. Something that could, you know, influence their way they were able to respond to their survey in a systematic way. So let's see what, what this would work. What, which of these would work? Make the most sense. So um, once. Okay, so this is kind of weird. I, I asked you whether again, you're not even going that far. Since it's saying voting districts and your total is 500. So that kind of means, so yeah, this is a, again, this is one of those questions where you have to have a little background and what this is even dealing with. Voting districts are just basically um, kind of like sections of the city. So the thing is that those sections could be different sizes. So you want to basically make sure that the, um, the, the number of, of res, number of residents you take from each district is like rep it's proportional to like how much that voting district makes of the, of the total so for example let's say you have maybe one district that has let's say 100 residents the other one has let's say 200 and the other one has 200 as well so you wouldn't you wouldn't want to divide 500 by three and take you know um, this is not even actually I did this backwards. Um, let's say so. Let's say you have a city of ten thousand people, and four thousand of them are in this district. One thousand is here, and then um, five thousand over here. So this is the you know this district right here. Let's whatever it is makes up half of the population. So you would take a sample of two, you would take 250 from here to using your sample. And then from this smallest one, it's only 10%, you would only take 50. And then, then you would take the other 200 from here because you want to make them representative based on how big they are. So then you would have your answer then be, yeah, it'd be B because we're talking about proportion. So B will be your answer. All right, so there you go. I hope that helps, but um, let me know if you have any questions or um, requests or anything you want me to go over. And please subscribe.